going on YouTube? It's your boy OGT Man, and today we got TikTok's unintentional curse on hip hop. Now, don't know what that might mean, but all I'm going to say is, oh, as a matter of fact, you know, certain these rappers, these certain certain rappers think that they're good just because they blow blew up off of TikTok. I'll say that. <sighs> but some of them might not even be, you know, good. Well, um, anyway, let's go ahead and get into the video. Shouts out to No Aidas. No Aista. Let me stop. I'm tired a little bit, y'all. Don't mind me. But, birthday in two days. June 14th. Yeah. Yeah. Talk is everywhere. In the United States, the presence in the courtroom and on the screens of 50 million daily users makes the social media giant inescapable. It's affected so many parts of life, including dance, humor, and education. But its greatest impact is undeniably on music. Artists can go from underground to number one in only a few days thanks to the app's influence. And rappers like Lil Nas X and Roddy Rich both directly benefited from this phenomenon. But while it seems to be one of the greatest things to happen for the growing industry of hip hop, it's proven to be just as efficient for eliminating the potential stars of tomorrow. When the hype dies down and these blossoming rappers are called upon for another hit, the results range from embarrassing to downright tragic. It's your boy Luesta, and this is TikTok's curse on hip hop. But before we jump into it, let me tell you guys about today's sponsor, Price Picks. Yeah. Everyone deserves the fastest, most I reliable like internet speeds, regardless of where they live. With I ain't gonna lie. How many decided no. being at 10 dates with one is launched in the US back in 2016, TikTok has truly taken the world by storm. With 1 billion monthly users across the globe. God damn. 1 billion? Oh yeah, niggas don't be doing nothing for real. 1 billion though? God damn. 1 billion is fucking crazy. Despite only being the fourth largest social media platform, what gives it an edge for hopeful artists is the young demographic that is captured. And these days, one can argue that there's no better place to make a name for yourself than TikTok. As social media has become the ruling force in today's culture, even the most old head rappers have begun acknowledging its vitality in the game. You gotta be active on your socials because socials media is the way of life now. But the flip side of that is it's easier to get on than it was back in the day. So it's a gift and a curse. There's so many much more people rapping than it was back in the day. Now you could pull some shit up and everybody could see you from wherever you record that right. and got a, a chance to go viral. You can, and get, it's a, just you can that get a easy. magical repost from somebody right. or something. And it's just that easy. Gilly the Kid dropped some solid advice here. And it definitely seems like success is at the fingertips of social media users. It's simple. Drop a track, watch it blow up, and before you know it, you're going from a bedroom studio to playing at Rolling Loud. The pace of today's success is insane. But the truth is, things aren't so simple. Cause while TikTok certainly fosters more rapid accomplishment, it ultimately breeds a loop of drastic failure once the one hit wonders fizzle out. Of course, some outliers exist, namely Lil Nas X and his 11 Grammy nominations, as well as Ice Spice for her continued domination among female. I ain't gonna lie. Ice Spice cool and all, but Oh no. This is her music. So, excuse me. Is a certain music that she does that I really can't get on. Good looking though, but. Artists. For others like Megan Thee Stallion, Central C, and Jack Harlow, the app further cemented their superstar status when tracks like Savage, Doja, and First Class took off on the platform. Jack Harlow even admitted in an interview that almost all big songs blow up on TikTok. Now, some songs are literally rooted in some dance challenge that blew it up. Songs go big because it's what kids are listening to. TikTok is where kids are. Sorry. Aside from this, he also mentioned the engagement is better. TikTok is so incredible. 
and the comments section is what makes it really incredible. The comments are almost always like something will be funny and then you open the comments and that's when you bust out laughing. As we've seen with records like Munch, a track blowing up on TikTok can be the foundation of a long and healthy career. But in recent years, it's starting to seem like the platform's ability to establish an artist beyond that initial buzz is a rare exception, rather than the unwavering truth people make it out to be. For every lucky musician that makes this leap into mainstream success, there are situations like that of Stay Solid Rocky, Fly on a Boss, or Paul Russell, the guy behind Lil Booth. None of these people that I know, mind you, none. All unfamiliar names. No gap. <laughs> In the case of Paul, he signed a major deal off one record, only to find that on the other side of the big hit was a brick wall, stopping him in his tracks as a disregarded TikTok rapper with no real depth or talent. And with the taste the TikTok music narrative leaves in people's mouths, this is the last thing you would want as your artistic reputation. These days, fans are saying things like, TikTok has sucked the soul out of every song. No longer can I envision anything but some generic white girl doing some useless shit with the song in the background. There are so many ways that TikTok can derail the careers of rappers. And studying these cases that range from unfortunate to downright absurd is essential for understanding the current state of rap. But for Coilerae, it's different. Few artists can claim TikTok as their bread and butter the way that Coy LeRae does, as it seems to be one place where her music actually finds chart-worthy success. While she's had quite a few big hits, she's constantly chasing the next viral moment on the video platform. Now, this isn't some video essay cap either. She's literally admitted to using this strategy since day one. Like, we drop no more parties on an off day Wednesday. And, um, you know, I, I took advantage of the TikTok and, and all of that. And at that moment, everybody tried to shit on me. It was like, oh, you're a TikTok artist. All this other stuff. And I was like, man, listen, literally, yeah, I know y'all. Right. You knew something Whoa. different. He was like, okay. I didn't give a fuck. Huh. Once I knew that the TikTok drove streams, I'm about my money and I'm mm. about shit strategy mm. i don't have no time to have pride and ego on people that's gonna be like oh you're a tiktok artist is that third cool if you don't appreciate the music and you hating because you can't do it the way i did then that's cool mm. but check the numbers out because right. tiktok is helping me go crazy and mm. as you can see now everybody's on tiktok yeah. respect to her she she was popping that shit no no gap she was popping that shit she said she ain't give no fuck she gonna get that bread and then dip you can dip, continue to do it and hey that does hey you can't do nothing but 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 you know you can't do um, familiar with the TikToks that use everything from thirst traps to music snippets to dance challenges hoping to grab an audience and write a trend Coyle Ray is the blueprint of a TikTok artist, and she's known to employ all of these strategies and more to ensure her continued success. To her label's delight, it's a marketing asset she's continued to invest in. I am not even like the best TikTok expert. Like I just literally two weeks ago found out how to do because I just did it with my, um, I think we did it with the shoes. But Neek was making that. Like it took us like an hour to make that shit, bro. I yeah. see why people be like, nah, I ain't fucking with it. <laughs> with each new release, Koi puts all her chips on TikTok, banking on its algorithm for her fame and Hey, she getting that money though. She getting money, uh and fortune. This strat has shown to lack consistency. As a result, she's created a dilemma where her singles might see the light of day, but her albums prove to be an unworthy investment for record deals and the attention of the masses. As Pitchfork lays it out in this savage review, Koi's self-titled album proves that the rapper and singer's endlessly imitative work chases trendy sounds and obviously samples to mask that it has nothing to say. And Koi she's found out that being pigeonholed as a TikTok artist can be a really dangerous game. It can even confine artists to one kind of sound, which is the reality for Erica Banks, whose song Buss It spawned one of the platform's most viral challenges and robbed her of a meaningful career. The track's buzz scored her a Travis Scott remix and record deals at 1501 in Warner, but the second she tried to move on, nobody was willing to help her take that step like to put you in a box like you gotta stay here yeah we want to see you bust it all the time yeah but like what other <laughs> what other sides of you that it's like yo i, I can do this too that, yeah you know, i people tell people know. that a lot um because whenever producers send me beats they always send me like clubby right like, they don't send me the r&b they don't send me the caribbean they don't send me the you know <laughs> and i can pretty much do everything 
Um, I have a song for every genre as far as what's in the vault. Mm. But I always want people to know that I'm not just the club girl. For years since she had her major hit, Erica pulled out of her contract to regain independence, leaving her 500k in the hole and nothing beyond a one-hit wonder. This is the exact kind of fate that Philly's Armani White is looking to dodge as well. Armed with one of last year's biggest hits with his groovy track, Billie Eilish. Bitch, I'm stylish. Black top, big t-shirt, Billie Eilish. Watch on my wrist, but I want that diamond. This Nori sampling, superstar referencing Smash single, immediately pulled him from being an underground rapper to star status. Ever since, he's insisted that he'll make it happen again. Mm. Now I'll be thinking about that when I'm, you know what I mean? Like when I'm, when I'm putting these numbers on the board, it's just like, all right, let's do it again. Let's do another one. Or let's just raise the bar. Like, you know, because with Billie Eilish, it was a scale of like, at first it was a million views. And it was like, well, I get a million views that fast. And it went to two million. Then it was 10,000 pre saves Then it was 20, 30, 40. Every time you do it, it's like, well, can he do it again? And, and I just, yeah, <laughs> we just raised the ball. Despite this confidence in his ability, he shows reservations about his heavy association with TikTok. For all the positive advantages of a presence on the platform, the negativity attached makes it hard for the industry to take you seriously as an artist. When performing at the BET Hip Hop Awards, Armani expressed frustration that the app was even mentioned in his introduction. However, he managed to save himself with a positive spin. It was like validation before that. Even when they bought me out, it was like, you know, TikTok, like, bad joke, he's on the mic, TikTok is very heavy in the culture. And I'm like, ah, why did they keep saying? TikTok, man. <laughs> but I think that was the validator because before that, they didn't know, like, you knew the song. Everybody at this point knew the song, but you didn't know what it looked like, who it was from, where it came from. And it was like, oh, this is like a young rapper from Philly. His breakthrough success landed him a spot with Def Jam, which reaped a successful Billie Eilish remix, a feature on Denzel Curry's Goaded, and a respectable EP release. However, none of these projects came close to matching up with his debut stardom, where the young Philly rapper once had the world in a chokehold. His first impression brought in a ton of respect and success, but now he's left scrambling to replicate that impact on the game. Fans are sympathizing with his struggle, blaming the mere presence of a TikTok hit on his resume as the blockade on his path to further glory. All the TikTok rapper labels are undeserved. Not his fault that he blew up that way. I think a lot of people are gonna disregard him as a one-hit wonder TikTok artist, but he's been in the game forever and is really talented. As he struggles to curate his next big break, Armani still has some hope to cling to. Meanwhile, Sofago's TikTok deal has left him struggling on the wrong side of success. I ain't heard Sofago in a so fucking minute. I remember the first song I ever heard from him was on TikTok. Not not who's there at the door right now. Whoever remember that, let me know. Drop it down in the comments. But yeah, that's the that's the song everybody was singing. At. During the quarantine days, Sofago exploded on TikTok with Knock Knock, which is a track off his Angelic Sevens album. Strangely, the track didn't receive attention on the platform until far after its release. It was weird seeing Knock Knock get this big. But when I first dropped Knock Knock, it actually had like amazing potential, but it just didn't reach, reach that potential until like a year later. So it's just like amazing to like see what's going on now with the song, just, you know what I'm saying? Cause like we always had faith in Knock Knock, but like now it's like really it's This breakthrough record had the whole world believing in him. So much so that he signed with Travis Scott shortly after the track's release. But as quickly as he was placed in the spotlight, he was left to gather dust on a shelf. Fans began to speculate that LaFlame may have been sabotaging him all along. Fago has a lot of potential, and signing to Travis has been damaging. His growth has come to a complete halt and is even declining. And this time, everything moves so fast, and I think people could get over Fago before he even got a proper start. Unfortunately for Fago, this post nailed what the future would hold. By the time his debut album Pink Hearts finally reached the radio, not even Gunna, Ken Carson, and DJ Khaled features could prevent the massive flop. Left devastated, Sofago lost all patience and targeted his frustration by lashing out at his fans online. Rather cut all you fake ass half supporters loose and rock with the people who really fuck with me. My fan base is only gonna get stronger over the years. I just need my fans. I don't need critics telling me how to live my life or make music. You gonna make a million since you know so much. Despite these claims of growth, Fago has yet to come close to those first day heights again. As he steadily continues to drop, it seems as though nobody is taking notice. What a shame. Broke hair in 2021 and disappeared. As seen in the case of Fago, TikTok success sets high audience expectations, but it also leaves blossoming artists with a big head. I mean, just look at Satori Zoom. Back in 2020, his track Buster made waves on the platform. Right. 
suddenly. All right, now I really, I really don't know who the fuck that is. It's that that that's that's what TikTok will do to you. Don't don't even know some certain people in here. Certain people. Talking like he was a shoe in for a big money deal. Wouldn't be surprised if people in some quote unquote higher positions uh, would look at me. They might think I'm just another bullshit artist, someone that can make money off of. But the last thing I am is a fucking pawn. I'm a fucking paragon. That's pretty much it. Really? Yeah. His cocky attitude was something his fans bought in on as well. He's gonna be the biggest rapper of 2021. That's who. But here, we see TikTok's illusion of success strike again, as his most recent video barely gathered 20,000 views. Many artists have witnessed these situations unfold, which is why people like Flo Millie are doing everything to curb the TikTok artist tag before it collapses their reputation. After her track B Flow Mix and her feature on Snot's Mean got her major buzz on the platform, Flo initially rode that wave of popularity and did so unapologetically on an interview, where she openly stated that the platform of her breakthrough didn't really matter to her. She was just grateful for the opportunity to shine. Unlike many of her peers, she was also comfortable embracing the label of a TikTok rapper. While she was confident in her ability to succeed outside of the app when making these comments back in 2022, she was quickly humbled when her first studio album didn't even graze the charts. Two years and two albums later, Flo has begun to acknowledge the issues and false perceptions that TikTok has created for her and how difficult it was to live up to those expectations. You know, I think because social media has made people feel like and even me too, I'm a victim of it. Like it made us feel like we're supposed to like get success so fast. Mm. But that's not really the reality of social media and reality, two different things. So it's like you gotta really just come back to reality and know you gotta really work for this shit. Stuck in rising star status for an unfortunate stretch, Flo Millie has finally begun to climb her way back onto the charts as a feature on Lil Yachty's Never Lose Me. But of course, this song's success catapulted thanks to TikTok, further solidifying her as an artist who can't escape the confines of the app. Within the app's many issues for artists lies an underlying issue for all of its creative users. As the market floods to the video sharing platform, the window of success only shrinks. With this in mind, will TikTok ever be responsible for the stars of tomorrow? Well, as TikTok grows and changes, presenting itself as the ticket to fame and fortune in the digital age, it's important to acknowledge that even the ones who pulled off this rare feat have learned that the formula isn't as simple as overnight success. Like Lil Nas X, who proved that success was obtainable on TikTok and made impressive feats in the industry thanks to his explosion onto the scene. But with his recent Jay Christ campaign finding tons of success on TikTok, if for some reason didn't translate to the charts, where his song didn't even come close to the top 50. So we're in a time where millions of views on teasers still don't guarantee a successful track. And the days where rappers could organically produce these numbers are long gone. Take Roddy Rich for example, who literally reactivated his social media just because he knew his song would go viral on TikTok. There were other people in your team or there was an idea that it was going to be other songs were going to be the one that were going to do what the box did. I mean, the box kind of took a few people by surprise. Yeah, I mean, if you go back in history, like, I know I'd be like, delete my Instagram and shit, but the day that album came out, I had did a thriller. It's like the only thriller I ever did. I did it to the box because I knew. You knew? Yeah. Why? That was like my little sign, like, I know this is going to be the one. So, okay. Yeah. You're the only person then that I can ask this question to. What was it about that song? Thinking back now, two years after you put it out, what was it about that song that you knew had that special thing about it? With different songs, you just have a feeling. Yeah. Like, Today, we see the TikTok phenomenon truly fading out. Where clout on the app once earned hungry artists' respect and even record deals, label executives have revealed that for a while, it was like, all you gotta do is get a song going on TikTok. And it's out of here. It's not a guarantee anymore. Similarly, music tech CEO Roy Lamana explains the curse of TikTok fame on rappers as follows. Everyone thinks that when these viral things go off, it's gonna be something bigger. But even with the TikTok stuff, we're often seeing a big explosion. The song generates hundreds of thousands of dollars, then people move on. There's no connection to the artist. It's a fleeting moment. An elite manager also admits that more people are investing in songs that might not have the artist proposition attached to them. By default, if more of the people responsible for breaking acts are focused on songs, that's how you have a landscape where there are a trillion one-hit wonders. With a sea of talented rappers who are expected to make it, now left dry and fanless, the reality of TikTok's illusion becomes crystal clear. My advice? Young artists need to remove their focus from those TikTok smash hits and instead on finding the necessary building blocks of a role that's worthwhile in the rap game.
that's the end of the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. But yeah. TikTok. Like they said, it's a gift and a curse. You can blow up, you know, get known. But after that, if you don't, you know, have your status already built or like, you know, work for your views and stuff and just steady try to, you know, get it from TikTok, it's going to be underwhelming because, you know, you're going to think that you really something that you really not for some, certain people. Mm, as a feature, Blue Yachty never lose me. Just, just, damn. Had no idea, Coiler. It was still relevant. Me too. Yeah, that's just, yeah. But anyways, it's your boy OGT Main signing out. Yeet!